Hi everyone, my name is Shahriar Bustandus and today I want to talk about history of computer. There is five generation for computer. First generation is vacuum tubes, second generation is transistor, third generation is IC, fourth generation is microprocessor, and fifth generation is artificial intelligence. Now I want to talk about vacuum tubes that's for the first generation of computer. The vacuum tubes is from 1946 to 1956. It can perform 2000 to 16000 addition per second and had a main memory from 100 bytes to 2 kilobytes. The vacuum tube is very large machine special room to use the, this machine and especially train techniques to run maintain the size of a stove and refrigerator some can fit on can do 100,000 to 4 million operators per second cost about one tenth amount of second generation computer this computer became very common in medium large to business One of the examples of the first generation computer is ENIAC. The ENIAC computer was very large in size and its technology is for the vacuum tubes. It was the first general purpose of computer. Now I want to talk about the second generation. The second generation especially is the use for the transistor. This generation is from 1959 to around 1965 and is the huge difference between the first generation. It's a smaller, faster, and more reliable for the used transistor and 6,000 to 300,000 operators. Main memory is 6 kilobyte to 1.3 megabytes and one tenth the price of the first generation. And these generations become uh, common in, for the businesses and universities. Now I want to talk about third generation, integrated circuit, IC. When you open one device, you can see million of IC in that device. That is a huge revolution in computer system. It's built from 1965 to around 1972. To use integrated circuit in many transistor on one piece of silicon. Smaller faster and more reliable and lower price as you can see the all of the devices can be more smaller and smaller because of this ic and can do 100,000 to 400 million operation per second and cost about one tenth the amount of second generation computer this computer become very common in medium to large business Fourth generation is microprocessor. It is built from 1972 until now and use large scale to very large scale integrated circuit. It puts more than one IC on a silicon chip and can do more than one function. It's smaller, faster and more reliable and lower in price. The size of television or much smaller. Can do 500,000 to one billion operation per second and costs one cent or less the amount of third generation. It's very common in home and business. The last generation is the fifth generation. The fifth generation computer are only in the mind of advanced research scientists and being tested out in the laboratories. This computer will be under artificial intelligence and many of the operations which requires low human intelligence will be performed by this computer. Parallel to processing is coming and showing this possibility that power of many CPUs can be used side by side. The computer will be more powerful than those under central processing. Advance in superconductor technology will greatly improve the speed of information and traffic and maybe in the future can 
change all of the things that many devices in computer that now we use. As you can see, in the fifth generation, the robots can control all of the things and maybe they can think like a human. There is two types of computer, analog and digital computer. Analog computer recognizes data and continuous measurement of physical property and it has no state. Its output is usually displayed on the meter and graphs. Example are analog computer, speedometer of a car, thermometer, and etc. Digital computer works with number. They break all type of information into tiny units and use. Numbers to represent those piece of information. Everything is described in two states, one and zero. They are very fast and have big memory. Now I want to talk about classification of computer. As you can see in basic map for digital computer is divided into four main computer, namely supercomputer, mainframe computers, mini computers and microcomputers. That for the microcomputers divided in three computers, desktop computers, laptops, and hands held. And for the mini computer is workstation computer and servers computers. A supercomputer is a computer with a high level computational capacity compared to a general purpose computer. It comprises of multiple high performance computers working in parallel as a single system. Supercomputer uses thousands of processors at the same time. Because of that use for nuclear weapon where there forecasting, scientific simulation, oil and gas exploration, or in a large companies. Mainframe are huge computers that could be filled in entire room or even a whole floor. Mainframe can run multiple instances of operating system at the same time. Mainframe are used primarily by large organization for critical application bulk data processing. It's used for online data storage and mainframe used for transaction processing in banking, airline, and etc. A desktop computer that has a more powerful processor, additional memory, RAM, hard drive, and enhanced capability for performing a special group of tasks, such as 3D graphic or game development. Multiple users can use single workstation all together. A computer that has been optimized to provide service to other computer over a network use server. Servers usually have powerful processor, lot of memory and large hard drive, multiple CPUs and hard drives. Palm Tab, more commonly known as personal digital assistant. Palm top are tightly integrated computer that often use flash memory instead of hard drive for storage. Usually do not have keyboard but rely to touch a screen technology for user inputs. Slightly larger and heavier version of the palm top is the handle computer. Thank you for watching my presentation and I hope I have been able to provide you with the useful information about the story of computer.